All right. So I uh, would like to request uh, one of us who's joined the class already to go ahead and pray, please. Then we will get into our discussions. I'll pray. Yeah, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We we pray, Father, that as we learn about your prophetic and how you work with us, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit teach us even more, Lord. Open our heart, open our mind, so that we may receive what Pastor Nancy has for us, Lord. And what you speak through our Lord. In your mighty name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mangi. Thank you so much. Okay. So uh, in the last class, we had some questions that we were answering. Uh, Anita, could you pose that question to us once again? Uh, we will begin with answering your question and then get into today's lesson. Yes, Pastor. Can I ask Pastor? Yeah, Pastor, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, Pastor, what uh, I'm saying is uh, when you said that uh, uh, some prophecies we should not like uh, open up. And uh, so I was thinking uh, uh, when you said that you have to discern. Discern means mostly it has to be about the negative things, right? like which will not edify them or which would discourage them or something the area where they need to be helped with the prayer and which is our part and not uh, like we cannot uh, disclose it and uh, maybe they will not understand that i understand can it be a good part also maybe we have seen a good thing about them in the dream or a vision and uh, like we we are not supposed to say that is it like that okay uh, yes, uh, Anita, when God reveals something to us, it is in order for the maturing of the person who's concerned, uh, for the purposes of God to be fulfilled, and for the extension of his kingdom. So, with that in mind, our method of communication, or let me put it this way, what we do with that word which has been revealed is very important now if we don't discern now discerning doesn't only mean to figure out whether uh, you know that there, there is some sort of a judgment or something negative you know, that is being communicated and thereby i'm not going to tell the person so it's not just that it is to First of all, discern whether it is meant to be told to somebody. If it's not, then you just keep it in intercession. Okay. Uh, then the other thing is that even good things, especially uh, when there is uh, mentoring going on, uh, a good thing to do is to look at the level of maturity of the person that you're working with. This can also be parents and children. Okay? Maybe God reveals that a child is going to be so strong in the ministry or so strong in uh, certain skills. Now, very early on in the journey, if something like that is revealed, it can be good for the child because you've told the child that God is going to do all these wonderful things in your life. But at the same time, if you share that word too early, it can sort of be counterproductive because, you know, it can get into somebody's head. If you understand what I'm saying, it's a good thing. But when we are keen on helping someone develop and mature even the good thing maybe you don't maybe you don't really share it but you're grooming that person in that direction uh, and ensuring 
that you know that person is moving towards that destiny and not necessarily telling them directly you understand what i mean uh, anita sometimes we need to you, you know work with the information like that as well yes pastor i understood okay so there can be both good and so called negative um, communication or messages from god but for everything we need wisdom how are you going to say it should you say it or not um when should you say it you know all these things have to be discerned yeah thank you thank you pastor yeah sure sure thank you so i think there's clarity on that uh, subject there uh, i hope it's clear uh, or would you all have any more questions okay if not we will just uh, proceed with our next topic here which is about prophetic song we've been saying that the word of god uh, or the message of god can come through in various ways we've touched on the earlier ways of just directly the word being spoken then we said the power of god we said intercession we can hear the message and then go into prayer about it prophetic song is the other way prophetic song and prophetic music okay even music can carry the prophetic anointing okay so we'll we'll look at it in depth now talking about prophetic associated with music you know if you go back to the times of samuel we know that in the training that he gave uh, the young prophets he engaged them in music uh, several of them were instrumentalists they used stringed instruments tambourine flute harp uh, and you know uh, instruments like that and they prophesied as well so in first samuel 10:5 you know we see that when saul encounters this company of prophets they come with the instruments and music okay as well as they are prophesying so there is something you know with the uh, with the right kind of music if i could if i could say so um that helps one step into the prophetic realm when we consider okay elisha the prophet you know there was a time when uh, king jehoshaphat along with two other kings wanted to inquire from the lord regarding um, their fight against the king of moab at this point you know both all of them go to meet elisha and for elisha to prophesy what he does is he calls upon a musician okay and that musician comes and that musician plays and then you know we read that the hand of the lord came upon elisha so something about the music which was played at that point activated the prophetic anointing as we look at these truths from scripture uh, we must recognize that our times of singing our times of worship our playing of musical instruments it's not just a part of our service format you know there is so much more that god can do in those moments and through the music now when we look at you know, portions like psalms and you know uh, other passages of scripture we see that you know several musicians songwriters um singers they were they were mightily anointed they were uh, used by god to also reveal 
the purposes of God. And many of them were very skillful. They engaged in worshiping the Lord. Um, and as you read different passages, particularly the time when David built his tabernacle that we have talked about in some of our other courses, we see how there is a release of the prophetic. Okay, For somebody to, for a team to keep worshipping the Lord 24 bar 7, because David's tabernacle of uh, worship is associated with continuous prayer, intercession and worship. Now, how can you keep something like this going? And we read uh, in the word of God that this went on for 33 years. So with one songbook, you know, I don't think 24 bar 7 uh, and 33 years, you know, you can keep singing to the Lord. You obviously need fresh songs to be released from heaven. And that is the manner in which, you know, these, these, uh, Skillful vocalists, musicians, songwriters ministered unto the Lord. So they heard from God. They got the words, the uh, intent, you know, the intention, God's, whatever is on God's heart, they were able to pick that up. And then we see that these anointed musicians were able to put the right music to the songs that were being given to them. So this is the manner in which, you know, the uh, the prophetic played out through music and song. Excuse me. Now, let's continue to understand the power of uh, prophetic worship. As we have said earlier, you know, the impact of the prophetic word, we've, we've said that it brings... Um, edification, exhortation, comfort. So when somebody is singing a prophetic line or let's say some prophetic words, we can expect the same impact. Okay, not just that. We uh, also said that the prophetic word can release the mind of God to us or it can tell us what God wants to do. And similarly, the prophetic song can also reveal the mind of God to us. So the same things. It's just that the communication here is coming in the form of a song okay, or it's coming as music. So the impact, however, remains very similar to the other expressions of the prophetic anointing. Also, the release of God's prophetic power can take place. You know, the way we saw uh, the hand of the Lord came upon Elisha and he began to prophesy. Now, when there is prophetic music, one can expect the supernatural things to take place. Uh, there can be a release of the gifts of the spirit. There can be, um, you know, healings that are taking place. There can be deliverance. You know, even in a mass gathering, if there is a prophetic, let's say, a tune that is played, uh, demons can be cast out of people. Like you know, uh, multiple people at the same time. So what we we are going to see is a demonstration of God's power to uh, any extent. So these are all the outcomes of the release of the prophetic through song and music. Yeah, uh, just excuse me, I'll, I'll just drink some water. My throat is not too good today. Yeah, just a moment. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah, so when it comes to uh, music and song and the prophetic anointing, in the expression of the prophetic uh, in this manner, we can broadly classify you know, the songs in four different categories. There can be songs that have to do 
uh, as songs that minister to God. Okay, minister to God meaning they are sung to God. So we could categorize these songs as songs to the Lord. Okay. So songs to the Lord is one category. There can be songs of exhortation to people. That is the second category um, uh, under which we can classify some of these songs. These songs are also uh, released from God's heart as the songs that God would like to sing to his people. Now, the third category is prophetic songs of declaration. Okay, These songs of declaration are primarily um, those that are sung against the kingdom of darkness. They can be sung against demons, against uh, opposing situations. They can be sung over, um, you know, nations. And we see uh, uh, the work of God and we see, you know, transformation taking place and all of that. So songs of declaration. And finally, the last category would be prophetic action accompanying one or more of the above. So we said uh, these are just, you know, this is like a general classification. There can be songs sung to the Lord. There can be songs which are sung to exhort God's people. Many of them are the songs that God himself sings upon his people. The third one is prophetic songs of declaration. Okay. This is against demons, situations, and um, or sung over nations, and prophetic action that may accompany one or more of the above. So let's talk a little bit about prophetic songs to the Lord. So this is common. We usually, in our worship times, we are used to singing songs that adore God, singing songs that bring worship to him. There are songs of praise that we lift up before the Lord. So what's the difference? What is a prophetic song of worship or praise to God? It's simply <coughs> a song which is given in the now. Now, it could mean that right at that moment, you know, the the song leader, whoever's leading, begins to sing a couple of lines that he receives, okay, from God. It could happen in the in, in those very moments, or this could be something like, um, let's say, the person has spent it down some time ago, but you know they they know that this is what the Lord would want them to sing right now. So that way you know that it's the right song for that time. So when you sing a prophetic song like that, even to praise and worship God, there is you know something about it, something about the way it connects us to God, something about the way um, you know we are able to worship God with that particular song or those particular words uh, in those moments. Uh, and, you know, scripture always encourages us to be sensitive to God, to receive the now song. Um, uh, in fact, scripture calls it the new song. And there are lots of verses that say, you know, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to him a new song. So if you look in your notes on page 100, there are several of those scriptures that have been uh, listed out for us where you see that term, a new song, um, that God will put a new song in our mouth, sing to the Lord a new song. So we are encouraged to uh, really hear from God and minister to him with a freshness. Okay? So this new song, that word new there is... Uh, mm, uh, Kadash, I, I don't know exactly how you would pronounce that Hebrew word, uh, but what it means is that the, the new is recent or fresh, um, and it's not just, you know, recent or fresh in that moment, but it's also something that previously never existed, it's something brand new. We would use the term brand new uh, for our understanding. So a uh, new song, 
to minister to the Lord. And new songs are birthed through the prophetic anointing. And we know that, you know, uh, God does new things. God will release new power through those songs. So, yeah. So these are the songs that we sing to the Lord. Now, are these songs given to us from God? Yes, we see many instances in scripture where God himself gives the words to sing back to him. Now, if you look at uh, Revelation, the book of Revelation, um, there, chapter 15, uh, verses you know 3 and 4, you would find that no, there is something known as the song of Moses and uh, the song of the Lamb, which God gives the people and he encourages, you know, the people to sing it back to him. So what are these, these songs? Basically, it's a prophetic song which God has given. Uh, and, you know, those songs are meant to be jotted down and given back to the people so that they can sing it to the Lord. Now, talking about singing to the Lord, ministering to the Lord, worshipping the Lord. Now, there's also, the Bible talks about Jesus worshipping the Father. It talks about, you know, Jesus singing praises to the Father. Okay? So, obviously, there are songs that the Lord Jesus has that minister to the Father. So, um, you know, there are several scriptures that, that talk about it. Hebrews 2 and verse 12 um, talks about it. Then, you know, uh, um, Revelation 19.10, where we read about um, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Okay. So basically, you know, it's a flow that's coming from Jesus. That's why it's prophecy. You know, it's it's the release of the heart of Christ um, uh, as worship. So we can sing to God these new songs of worship. Now, is there anything wrong if we sing songs that we already have? Because we have all these amazing songs that you can um pull out from you know old hymnals and and things like that well there's nothing wrong okay Th those are beautiful songs and uh, for a given moment you know that could be the most appropriate song as the spirit of god impresses on our hearts but what we see um, through scripture is that god is god has you know and an, like his um the treasury has so many, so many songs uh, and many new songs. So we should not limit ourselves to what we already have. You know, that's the point uh, that we are making. And if we press in, we would, we would see that God can release to us, you know, several new songs. So we can minister to him with those new words and experience that refreshing and that new power of God. Now that was the first category. The second category is where there are songs of exhortation to the people. We, uh, where do these songs come from? We see that the people of God, they become the channel of this exhortation. Paul encourages the believers, you know, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Okay, so there is one aspect of singing to the Lord by ourselves, but there is also this aspect of to one another, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So we can receive, you know, songs from the Lord and minister it to others. Similarly, in Colossians, we read admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Colossians 3.16 tells us that. So the way we understand this is, you know, um, from scripture is, you know, you already have psalms that, have been given to us. Uh, there are hymns from church history that we can take. We know the truth of God's word. 
now that can be sung over people okay so uh, that is how we are going to understand this in scripture we also recognize that god speaks over his people he sings over his people many of us would be familiar with the passage from zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 17 where we read the lord your god in your midst the mighty one will save he will rejoice over you with gladness he will quiet you with his love he will rejoice over you with singing so god sings over his people so there is this element of exhortation over the people of god okay so uh, those are the two categories in which we can classify some of the songs now moving forward we see that there can be prophetic songs of declaration over demons uh, this is something we have already talked about in um, believers authority you know so <laughs> as we stand firm against the enemy spiritual warfare can also simply look like singing it can look like praise and for a believer you know um, he or she might wonder what can a, a song of praise do what can uh, my singing do but the word of god very clearly tells us that you know this praise this praise executes vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples okay and it by to bind the chains of kings and the nobles with fetters of iron to execute on them the written judgment from psalm 149 verses 5 through 9 so there are times you know where god would lead us to simply praise him simply worship him and it need not be just the lord you know giving us the words this can be something that you know as we sense in our spirit okay this is a moment for warfare you just break out in song and you just begin to worship the lord and exalt the the lord and you know together with the holy spirit of god and as you're doing that what we just read excuse me executing judgment over the enemy is taking place in the spiritual realm um and even if you know this this praise and this worship comes from um children in psalm 8 and verse 2 we see that he has ordained praise from the mouths of infants okay and through that the lord is able to fight his battles and uh, win the victory so even little children you know as they praise the lord uh, god can accomplish mighty things in the spiritual realm so we must never underestimate the power of praise the power of worship uh, as we stand against the enemy because it is able to overcome the enemy now talking about spiritual warfare and talking about songs you know uh, subduing the work of satan we can look back excuse me at the example of uh, saul you know if you recall there was one point where saul departed so far away from god that the protection of god was um, gone from his life and at that point a demon spirit was constantly tormenting him in those moments the uh, somebody you know one of one of the servants of saul i think uh, gave him this idea and said why don't you call a musician why don't you ask a, a, a skillful musician to come and play um, some music over you and uh, sure enough they called upon david uh, he was a skillful musician and obviously you know he was also uh, a man of god he came and uh, he began playing the harp and we read that at that time that spirit you know that was troubling saul uh, couldn't disturb him any more so again you know you see the power of music you see the power of 
praise you see the power of worship against the enemy and in this way we can uh, be victorious upon the enemy so this would be the third classification that we talked about the fourth one is some sort of a prophetic action that accompanies you know um, uh, the above a good example is king jehoshaphat okay now what did he do he went to war in uh, second chronicles 20 he went to war against the enemy uh, and this was a unique battle because the way he went to war was with praises to the god of israel so he gathered a set of prophetic singers to praise god and not only did they praise god but you know they literally walked in to the front lines while they were singing so there is an action that accompanies the singing and through this god was able to give them the victory in, in the most unusual battle you know anybody is just singing in battle unheard of never before but jehoshaphat had um wor got the worship of the lord you know as his battle cry and uh, not only did they engage in singing but they walked into the battle so some action is also involved and in this way you know god is able to work through those prophetic songs so why are we talking about all these things you know we just to let us know that in scripture we see such a strong association of music singing and the prophetic anointing so we mustn't let our times of worship uh, just remain as a sing song time you know just a couple of songs to <clears throat> prep you for the sermon that you're going to listen to unfortunately when we don't understand you know what what has happened in scripture it could um, Give us a place where we are not able to enjoy the more that God has for us through uh, prophetic song and prophetic music. So, anyway, uh, hopefully, learning these things will awaken us and take us to um, the value of prophetic song. The next section here is about the tabernacle of David. We've already studied this in depth, you know, and to courses earlier i think nearly all of you in this class have been part of those courses so i'm not going to okay let me just check if anyone's new yeah at least what i'm sure you've, you've heard about the tabernacle of david so i'm just gonna go over it uh you know uh, quickly so we see that david uh, was a king who established this unique form of worship called uh, tabernacle of david this was done around uh, 1000 bc and the speciality of this kind of worship was um, the 24 by 7 you know worship prayer and intercession uh, that he Initiated and this went on for 33 years. Uh, the people engaged in leading uh, this form of worship um, were specially chosen and appointed by David the king at that time. So, part of the team were 288 prophetic singers. There were 4,000 musicians um, who ministered to the Lord, and of course, you know, there were uh, the, the gatekeepers and other people. And you read about this in the book of First. Chronicles. David went ahead and instituted this worship, um, and later on, you know, a couple of other kings also followed this pattern of worship. The outcome of this kind of uh, worship is, you know, we see a uh, refreshing in the lives of the people. We see God's deliverance upon them we see victories in battle you know we, we see all these amazing things take place because of this kind of worship that people engaged in and not only was this something beneficial for the people but this 
form of worship, uh, an exclamatory worship, uh, if you want to call it, was highly impressive to God as well. So we see Prophet Amos you know, prophesy the heart of God where he confirms that he is going to raise up, he is going to rebuild the tabernacle of David. Okay, not uh, We now understand that he was not talking about a physical building, although that is going to happen, you know, as, as the Lord um, uh, establishes the rule and reign of Christ here on the earth. But in a spiritual sense, what Prophet Amos was saying is that this would be fulfilled in the believers. It would be fulfilled in the church. So um, Apostle James quotes this in Acts chapter 15, where you know he mentions the tabernacle of David. I'll just read that passage for us so that you know there is a clarity on what was said. So uh, Acts 15, verses 13 through 18. Um, okay, so it is written, after this, I will return and will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will rebuild its ruins and I will set it up so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord, even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who does all these things. So God is saying that as um, people begin to worship him okay, in this manner, similar to David's tabernacle with extravagant worship, continuous worship, um, prophetic worship and all of that, uh, there's going to be a great blessing, spiritual refreshing. And not just that, you know, in, in this promise, you know, he also talks about God said that all the Gentiles, that they will be drawn to God. So there's going to be a mighty harvest as this form of worship is restored in the church uh, this is something that we have seen happen around us it's you know happening uh, right now uh, and uh, uh, there are you know places of worship that that uh, have prophetic songs uh, that have continuous praise and worship and so on and so forth and you know a lot more is only expected uh, and as it happens in these end times, we can also expect many souls to be saved and brought into the kingdom of God. So that's a little bit about the tabernacle of David. Now let's talk about the worship leaders. We saw so many names uh, of people whom David engaged in um, you know, this form of prophetic worship. So two names that we can specifically look at is Chenaniah. Uh, Chenaniah was a very, very skillful musician who was appointed by David. Um, and he became the leader, okay, leader in charge of the music and songs. Um, he was responsible to appoint uh, other musicians, basically like the leader of the team. And, you know, he would decide how uh, they would minister to the Lord. So in First Chronicles 15, you read about Chenaniah. You also read about a person called as Asaf. Okay? Uh, Asaf is, again, a skillful uh, person who had you know, many sons and daughters. And the speciality of Asaf is prophetic, you know, prophetic songs. So he engaged in prophetic songs and leading you know, the people under him in this manner of worship. Not just songs, but also accompanied by music. You know, they used to use stringed instruments, cymbals, harps, and things like that. So he would guide the teams in prophetic worship. Uh, apart from you know, musicians, singers, there were prophetic songwriters in scripture. Okay? Um, so Asaf, Asaf uh, we said that he was into prophetic uh, songs and prophetic music so obviously you know he's also a psalmist uh, but other than Asaf uh, you could give David a lot of credit because several psalms that we read were written by David um, so you you find that there were people in scripture 
who heard from God. And as they heard from God, you know, they uh, penned down the words. And eventually, those words were given to musicians who, again, prayerfully added music to those songs so that those songs could then be, you know, any one of those categories that we talked about, you know, sing to the Lord, minister to the Lord, or sing over the people, or sing against the powers of darkness, you know, so on and so forth. So there were psalmists in scripture who would pen down these words. Now, the psalms that, that we have, primarily written by Asaf and David, they can be classified no? Uh, again, this is a very broad and a general classification uh, of the type of psalms. So I'll go ahead and uh, share that with us. Okay, Kennedy, do you have a question there? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I was just uh, looking at the notes. So yeah, go ahead, Kennedy. I think I've posted it on the chat. Yeah, yeah, I can see it now. Yes. So uh, Kennedy is asking, is it will it be okay to put God's songs under a property right or some kind of patency? Uh, so see, Kennedy, God's songs are meant to be sung by God's people. So, but then uh, are you saying, you know, even... Today, like when we sing songs here at APC, if you look at our social media handles as well, we give the credits because a certain group has sung the, those songs and, you know, we, we acknowledge that. That's a common practice. Are you referring to that? You what I'm saying is like what's happening in our locality. Mm -hmm. There's the property rights. Whenever you come up with a song uh, or a theme, is supposed to be protected under the property right. So would it be in order or appropriate to put God's songs under that kind of category of, classes or, of or patterns? Am I audible? Okay, so property rights, does it mean... Yeah, yeah, you are audible, uh, Kennedy. I'm asking you, uh, do you mean that you're not allowed to sing those songs or you have to pay to sing those songs, something like that? Exactly. Or, or you can't okay. redo, you can't replay part of the version when you're doing your own song. Like I can't quote your songs in part of my song or use your, 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 your rhythm. Okay. Uh, see, there are some uh, laws you know, that kind of protect the right of the uh, original songwriter or the original musician, which I think is okay because somebody wrote the song and you acknowledge them, you give them credit. And even when, you know, covers these days, a lot of songs, song covers are sung, but the credit is given and then, you know, they're allowed to sing those songs. I think that would be all right but if someone is restricting causing making people pay and all uh, i've never heard about that so yeah okay. we can share from the class and we can get under yeah. okay, okay sure thank kennedy you. thank you Thanks. thank you yes uh yeah say you have some question oh are you just going to contribute to your to the um question that um Sometimes this is just to protect um, the authenticity of the song and also so that it's not abused by another person. And I think the intention basically is not really for people to pay. I think it's just basically for people to acknowledge um, that, I mean, everyone should be acknowledged for their work, right? So I think it's just um, courtesy that when we pick someone's work, at least acknowledgement is given to that person. And then it's not abused, right? Because some people can use the songs for something else and they want to protect, you know, the content because they are using it to glorify God. So I think if we can come from that perspective, we'll understand why we need to protect the songs really. it's I don't think it's really passe for people to pay, you know, or not or to restrict 
the user. I think it's just to acknowledge and also to protect the contents of the songs. That's, that's what I think. Yeah, thank you, Say. I think you, you said it well. So um, it's, it's simply to protect those songs and uh, to prevent abuse. So yeah, Kennedy, I hope uh, you have a few additional insights there. Uh, so I'll just uh, quickly go ahead and complete um, our chapter here. We two more sections left. So the classification of these Psalms, um, there's something called as Mizmor. Okay? And you don't have to worry too much about this. If you're a musician, maybe you know you want to go deep into it. Uh, so I, I'll tell you the names. Mizmor would um, mean instrumental music. Okay, uh, that the poem that a songwriter like Asa for David would write, um, that would be set to instrumental music. So that kind of a psalm is known as Mizmor. And there were psalms which were known as Shigen or Shigon, whichever way you pronounce that Hebrew word. They are a meditation. And uh, in you would find a, a lot of Psalms that David wrote were wandering thoughts, you know, random. He's talking about something else and then he comes to some other topic. So those kind of songs are known as Shigyan. And other than that, there are songs called as Mishtim, which are the golden Psalms or poems. Uh, it simply means the, these particular songs are very precious. Okay, and they are highly valued, and those kind of songs are termed as mishtim. And you have uh, songs that are known as tefila, which are more like prayer songs or intercession uh, songs that are speaking to God. Then you have songs that are called as mashil, you know, that are more instructive in nature. Uh, then you have songs called as shir, which are no, just plain music. It's it's song and um, uh, it's more like a musical. Okay, so these are the broad classifications. And if you are into music, then maybe you wanna research this even more. So some practical instructions because we're talking about songs, music, and the prophetic. Uh, these instructions are for singers and musicians. So it really helps to flow in the prophetic if one is well prepared. Okay, this uh, this has to do with one's skill levels, you know, because at a point, you know, what if God gives you a song which um, it, it's it's greater than your range, and then you're not able to sing it because you're not, you know. Uh, skillful enough to move into that song. So it's helpful to be going up, you know, in, in your skill level um, and being prepared in that manner. Also spiritual preparation, you know, which means that you are prayed up, you are well versed in the word because, you know, we will study later that for us to discern the prophetic, you know, is this word really from God? We have to be equipped with the word. If we are not, it's going to be very difficult. You know, to 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 release the prophetic word and in this case prophetic song so a worship leader it's helpful if they know god's word they're constantly growing in god's word uh, they spend time in prayer remember we said that prayer is is very very important to build us up in the prophetic okay so okay all right uh, class i'm not gonna rush this just this last uh few thoughts here which I will take up in the next class and then we will continue on to our more practical topics okay hearing from God and and all of that so let's pray and close right now I uh, would like to request uh, anybody in the class to please pray okay we've already run out of time so if someone can just pray that will be nice can I pray, Pastor? Yes, yes, Shikumar. Precious Father, we thank you and praise you, Father God, for this wonderful morning which you have given to us. We surrender everything into your mighty hand, O oh God and Master. We thank you, Father God, as we are learning, Lord and Master, let our understanding and the knowledge increase day by day. And Father God, I pray that, Father, enlighten our understanding in these days, O oh Father God. 
We pray that, Father, remove our ignorance, Lord Master, regarding to your word and regarding to your gifts of Father God. We pray that, Father, as we are learning every, every day, every week, Lord Master, asking your grace to grow and shine for your kingdom. Lord, bless your servant of God, of Father God. Cover her under your blood, O God, Master. Thank you, Father God, for giving this opportunity to learn from you, Father. All the glory, honor, and praises belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. Amen. amen. Thank you, Shri Kumar. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day. We meet again uh, next week. And uh, I hope to post your assignment. So, yeah, you'll get to do your assignment next week. Okay. God bless. Bye.